In today's story, we're going to be talking about Avanti, another vulnerability they have exploited in the wild, and we've been seeing this name a lot. Avanti's been popping up for a variety of reasons, and we're going to kind of give a little, little background on what's going on, the mitigations in place, and we're going to go through everything that we currently have information on. So strap in, this is a fun ride with Avanti. So for starters here in this article, like I mentioned, there's a lot going on with Avanti the last few days and there's been a few more vulnerabilities exploited. So let's let's back it up a little bit, talk about what products it is that Avanti is getting exploited. So there's two really. This is their Avanti Connect Secure, which is their remote access VPN. So I'm sure you know, but a VPN is just focused on providing a secure connection between an employee's device and the company network resources. So that's what's going on here with Avanti and what they're using this product for. The other product in question is their Avanti NAC, which is a network access control. Um, basically it's going to control and restrict access to the network based on the security posture of the device. So. If your device isn't meeting certain checks, it's not going to allow it to connect to the network. It's as simple as that. And Avanti is a, a very big company. Like they say here, they have over 40,000 customers worldwide. And this is just a small sample of the customer set that they have. So you'll see Conair, GNC, City of Seattle, Weber, and Foxwoods. Um, I mean, certainly they have a lot of government customers as well, based on the release that's been going on and the expectation by CISA that we'll talk about later where they expect them to get these vulnerabilities patched. But this is a big company we're talking about. They've got a lot of customers and a wide customer base. So let's, let's talk about the first two vulnerabilities. So we covered this a little bit back on Wednesday, the two vulnerabilities that this uh, more recent wave with Avanti has started with. So the first one is this CVE 2023-46805. So it's an unauthentication, or sorry, it's an authentication bypass vulnerability that allows threat actors to access restricted materials remotely. Um, this one has a CVSS, which is the Common Vulnerability Security Score, or sorry, Common Vulnerability Score System, CVSS, of 8.2 so that's out of 10 um, anything 8 or above is usually a little bit higher like 9.8 to 10 is critical uh, I don't know those exact ranges but from my experience that's where, around what I see them at and the other one here is a um, CVE 2024-21887 it's a command injection vulnerability that allows authenticated admins to send unique requests as well as execute arbitrary commands. So the combination of these two is what's causing trouble. So it's allowing attackers to get past the typical authentication methods and then set up and run commands against the VPN and NAC appliances that we talked about before. So what does this mean then? All of this has led to the CISA, which is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. So a government agency that's been doing a lot for cybersecurity lately, talking about that, they've issued their first emergency directive of the year to basically mitigate and um, update these flaws. So there's a lot that goes into that, to getting these mitigated. Um, so you'll see in the next couple of tabs we've got here, this is the mitigation process. So there's a lot to it. We're not going to go through it step by step, but it goes through the causes of it, the CVEs, the resolution, and what you should do to actually resolve these issues. So if it's something where you're in charge of this effort, you're using Avanti, definitely recommend these resources. They'll be in the description. And then once all the mitigations are in place um, to get this taken care of, the next steps are recovery. So any appliances you had to take online, how you go about recovering those, getting your instances back up and running, this next link will show you how to do all that. So like I mentioned, both of these will be included in the notes. So feel free to go down below, check those out. If you want to do a little bit more reading on this. So something I'll cover real quick is what's in these directives. 
So let's uh, keep it fairly high level, but for mitigating, so they're wanting to wanting you to report the indications of compromise to the CISA, then remove compromised products from agency networks, and then bring a compromised product back into service, reset the device with the affected Avanti solution software to factory default settings and remove the attack vector by applying Avanti's mitigations, which is what we showed on one of those previous tabs. And then it goes into recovery instructions. So you're revoking and reissuing any stored cert certificates, reset the admin enabled password for storing uh, reset stored API keys, and then reset the password of any local user, including service accounts. So a lot of a lot of updating and work to do there uh, for your Advanti administrators to get everything secure and back up and running. Another piece that's pretty interesting is sh what Shadow Server is doing, and I know we've talked about them a little bit on this channel. But Shadow Server is a site that basically is monitoring different compromises for how widespread it is, exploitation attempts, all of that stuff. So a quick rundown of what they've got going on this one. Um, so you'll see here this graph is the compromise attempts for this Avanti Connect Secure, so just the VPN appliance. And you'll see here back on the 18th, um, which is what that article is referencing, there were 420 instances of compromise just on that date. So you'll see here I expanded the date search to include up to today, and um, it's back on the upswing over the weekend, so 550 on the 19th. 613 on the 20th and then 701 yesterday so it's definitely widespread and it's hitting a pretty fast pace and the upturn is definitely not what you want to see you want to see that graph on the downswing so this is being definitely being exploited but it's really interesting to see I recommend checking out shadow server it's a really good site for seeing vulnerabilities and how they're being exploited so what is it what is it actually that's being deployed on user machines? And so you see here, there's a lot of different tools using these attacks. This just gives a breakdown of the tools that are in there. So the zipline passive backdoor, the custom malware that can intercept network traffic, supports upload download operations, creating reverse shells, which is basically allowing the attacker machine to be connected to the infected machine, then proxy servers and secure tunneling. The next one is a thin spool dropper, a custom shell script dropper that writes the Lightwire web shell onto Avanti CS, securing persistence. So setting a back door to be able to get back to the infected machine once they are no longer connected. Um, you'll see that with a lot of these. So the next one is that Wirefire web shell that's for command execution and pay payload dropping onto the infected machine. The next one again is arbitrary command execution. Below that, the warp or warp wire harvester. So this is a uh, credential harvesting is what this tool is used for. And then the PySoxy tunneler facilitates network traffic tunneling for stealthiness. Busybox, multi-call binary combining many U Unix utilities using various systems. And then thin spool utility, which is not thin spool dropper used to remount uh, the file system as read write to enable malware deployment. So pretty, pretty uh, exhaustive use of malware tools here, covering all sorts of bases. So it's pretty, uh, pretty concerning if you're a host of one of these tools like Avanti to be able to get this patched and back up and running. And something I'm always curious about with these kind of attacks is, is why, why is the attacker trying to do all this? What is their end goal here? And you'll see from a lot of those tools, it kind of talked about what some of the end goals were. So harvesting credentials, session data, um, and other additional info from the comp compromised networks. And it also mentions here an end goal of stealing credentials, deploying web shows and additional malicious, malicious payloads. And something I also found interesting is there's also been attacks that have been seen for mining cryptocurrency and Rust-based malware payloads still waiting for analysis. So there's a lot of different use cases of what the attackers are doing here. And one other thing worth, worth noting is that 
these are suspected Chinese state-backed threat groups. Um, two of them, one we had mentioned before, but there's two here that have been part of this. And they've already backdoored over 2,100 Avanti appliances using that web shell variant. So it's widespread, it's Chinese state-backed attackers, and they're doing a lot in these systems that they get access to. That's all on the original two. But we're gonna quickly cover the third one that has popped up more recently in the news, but those are the two that have been really wreaking havoc. And as you can see by that graph that I showed you, it's not, not on the downswing. So the final one here is another authentication bypass. And it's actually this vulnerability with the 9.8 score that's popped up. It's been used as a patch bypass for previous Avanti vulnerability. So this was the previous vulnerability that had a CVSS score of 10 that was way back in April, 2023. So this one we're talking about with the score of 9.8 is used to bypass the patch for that other vulnerability. So if you are an owner of an Avanti system or an admin, it is very important to make sure you have the version 11.11.00 .11 or later. Um, because this issue is patched in versions in that version or later versions, but anything before um, this this patch bypass is in effect and is causing issues. So definitely recommend getting your systems updated, mitigating it based on those uh, CISA recommendations, and really watching out with your Avanti appliances. If you have any questions on anything we covered, anything I missed, just let me know down in the comments. Always look forward to hearing from you.